Hello friends and fellow gamers, this week the Card Clash of Illusion returns to Idle Heroes, and that's pretty exciting, as there's lots of rewards up for grabs. But this time round, I don't think it's as good for free-to-players as it has been in the past, and that's for one tiny reason. So if you're wondering whether you should be using your gems or contract story gems this week, I'll be breaking that down for you. And if you're a spender, we'll take a look at what options you guys have too. Now before we jump in, let me tell you about what was supposed to be happening this weekend, which was my Idle Heroes 10 Star Cup tournament. Well, we've had to push things back by a couple weeks, so it's going to be in a few weeks time. We're looking towards the 19th and 20th of October for that tournament. So just keep your eyes out on YouTube as that will be live streamed over that weekend. And there's still time for you to sign up if you haven't already. More information you can find in our Discord. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at this week's event for Idle Heroes. So this is now the third time Card Clash of Illusion has shown up. So of course, we're getting the usual stuff here, which is every day you're getting seven enchanted cards and these will help you complete the event. So make sure you log in every day and collect them. As well, we've got the cool events here. If you bought the Splendor Awakening card, that's available for you to keep using. Don't forget to use this every day. But more importantly, we've got our value packages. Now, these here are offering gems and enchanted cards. And you might be wondering, especially if you're a free-to-play player, whether you should be using your contract story gems on this this week. Well, we need to take a look at the rest of the event before we make that decision. But of course, Card Clash of Illusion is here. Now, typically, you can expect to get to Stage 5 extremely easily just with what you can buy with gems. So you can easily purchase with gems using 6,000 of them enchanted cards. I would encourage you to do this if you're a free-to-play player. The rewards are really nice because actually, if you go ahead and get five of these glorious treasury coins, you will get 1.25 million stellar shards. And I think the conversion between gems to stellar shards is extremely good value. Not to mention, you're also getting some crystals of transcendence thrown in there as well, which can help you get a transcendence hero. However, you might wonder if you should push up to stage seven and stage nine. Now to do this, it will require you to use starry gems. And you will need ideally contract story gems for this. So one good thing is once again, we have the contractual strategy. And this is going to give you 600 contract story gems if you've completed the normal campaign. Now, this is possible for anyone who has a remotely decent level 130 or higher account. So this should be no problem unless you're a newer player, in which case it will be more difficult. So what I would encourage you to do, if you're just a newer player, use your gems and get up to stage five call it there. If you want to, you can keep going using contract story gems and be careful. I would wait until the very end of the week. You don't want to spend more contract story gems than you need to because it shouldn't need you to spend all of them to get to stage seven. So you should actually have some of your 600 left over at the end. And that's really good. That means you'll be leaving this event with a profit in Contract Story Gems. And if you haven't already been able to tell from previous event reviews, having Contract Story Gems on a free-to-play account is extremely useful. So using as few of them as possible is really nice if you are going to push up to seven. But that also makes you think, hang on a second, why don't I just stop at stage five and that way I can save all my Contract Story Gems? Yeah, that's not a bad idea either. I know a few free-to-play players who are definitely going to be doing that. And you might be wondering, well, should I push to stage nine? Well, to get to stage nine, that's actually going to require you to go and take a look at some of these value packs. And you might need to spend around a thousand contract story gems, maybe even more to get to that stage. So I would probably avoid doing that if I was a free-to-play player unless you've got a good number of contract story gems spare, because getting to 15 glorious treasury coins is pretty good. If we go ahead and take a look and skip past most stuff now to the glorious treasury, you'll see that you unlock store three after spending 10 treasury coins, which means you can use the final five of your 15 to pick up sublimation material. And this is really good if you want to enhance your transcendence heroes. Store one, of course, we're always going for stellar shards here. Some people have considered crystals of transcendence, but I would only encourage that if you have literally three times as many stellar shards as you do crystals of transcendence which is pretty difficult to get to that stage but if, if you are at that stage then maybe one pickup of crystals is fine but that's me just giving you guys the potential option i would almost always go for stellar shards and if in doubt 
get Stellar Shards, don't take the risk and go for Crystals, because you'd rather have a good and upgraded Transcendence Hero than lots of Transcendence Heroes who you can't upgrade because you don't have the good number of Stellar Shards. Now, if we look at the rest of this week's stuff, we've got the Illusion Leaderboard. This just rewards people for doing the card Clash of Illusion, as there is a second stage here where after opening your cards, you can go ahead and just try and do as much damage as you can to this boss. And if you're ever confused about the card Clash of Illusion, I've got lots of videos on this channel featuring how to do the card Clash of Illusion. So if you're a new player who's looking at this a little confused, just search Card Clash of Illusion MKX Jump into YouTube and you'll see me clearing through that in multiple different accounts and you'll get a feel for how this game mode works. So yeah, basically the Illusion Leaderboard is just a scoreboard of who can do the most damage against that boss. Now the next thing we have for this week, which seems to be a trend when it comes to Cloud Clash of Illusion, is a Soul Awakening Offers. This is basically an opportunity for you to do Awakens and get rewards. You'll get a certain number of points depending on the Awakening tier you get in the Soul Temple on your heroes that you awaken, and those points will add up to different prize rewards. 100 is pretty nice, it does give you access to an artifact, and 150 gets you a Lemon Chest which gives you 45,000 sublimation materials. 300 is when things get real spicy, as you can get a 90,000 essence sublimation chest and there's also as well a chest that contains 50 shards for a core so these rewards are pretty good however you will need to spend anywhere around three to three and a half thousand starry gems to get to this point so when you consider the investment of going into card clash illusion i have been on the record saying before it's actually worth it to get to stage nine first and i still think that's true i think getting to stage nine is completely fine However, if you are pushing to stage 10 and 11, I wouldn't do this. It's previously been possible. You can get a B- stone from this, but actually I would stave your starry gems because sometimes DH games do release Soul Awakening offers in line with a Soul Awakening session. And if you don't know what a Soul Awakening session is, it basically gives us an additional reward for 200 points, which is also a B- minus or higher Awakening stone. So getting access to one of these stones is typically a really good thing as it will help you in future Soul Awakening offers. So if you're a budget player, free-to-play player, or someone that just doesn't have a lot of contract story gems or is looking to do something the most optimal for your account, then I would argue waiting for a better opportunity to go on this is the right decision and actually saving and not going into the soul awakening offers when a soul awakening session comes up that's when you want to go in so that you can get a b stone and when it comes to the card clash i wouldn't go any further than stage nine now we also do have a starlight melody and this is pretty interesting as the starlight melody is going to be able to pick us up resources such as transcendence copy selection chests stellar shards and if you are able to get super deep 1500 is getting you 10 more glorious treasure coins and 2500 is getting you access to an origin chest of your choice as well as treasure train items now i do think the origin artifact selection chest is the best one origin artifacts are better than mysterious artifacts so yeah go for these if you can however pushing to this level already requires you to spend money because you can't actually go beyond 1500 points but there are multipliers up here which will multiply your points so you can take 1500 to 3000 with the times 2 6000 with the times 4 and 7500 with the times five and that's important because it coincides with a moonlight gift which encourages you to spend because this is also giving you card Clash of Illusion Enchanted cards, which is pretty nice. And for these higher rewards, you're also getting cool stuff like soul symbols and stellar shards thrown in, along with these multipliers, which make life a lot easier for doing the Starlight Melody. Now, the Starlight Melody is a very common way that spenders can get their hands on Spiritual Essence. This is a resource that's normally difficult to get if you're a common spender, because you upgrade and upgrade and upgrade lots of Transcendence Heroes to Destiny, and quickly realize you're actually running out of this more than you are Stellar Shards or other resources. So this is quite nice. If you're a spender, there is the option of going to a hundred bucks here, and that will get you times two. Uh, the times two rewards are okay, right? You can go with these enchanted cards, pick them up. You can buy actually the uh, either, you've got a few choices actually, you can go for the value pack here, which gets you 40 enchanted cards. That's assuming that you're already going to do a lot of starry gems here. Or your other option is to go with the Flora's Picnic, grab Prism Starry Gems here, and then you've got treasure coupons, cause of transcendence, and a chest here that also contains more contract starry gems. Then you can use those starry gems to go and push up here and actually grab the starry gem packages that way. So that can help you make progress in the card Clash of Illusion as well. Now the goal here would ideally 
probably be if you were pushing this to get to probably stage 17 or stage 20 if you wanted to push super deep. But I think if spending 100 bucks uh, anywhere past stage 11 is good. And ideally, you want to push up to something like stage 17 because when you combine it with access to resources, as you can see in the Starlight Melody, uh, we're also getting more of these glorious treasure coins. So you can probably end up with as many as 80 glorious treasury coins by doing this. And actually, if you take a big look at what DH Games have done to store five and four, they actually have reduced the requirement. These used to require you to do 60 treasury coins. Well, now you only need to do 40, which means that's an opportunity to pick up even more Destiny materials on your accounts. And also you can get more Origin artifacts. This is actually a really good move from DH Games because previously we had to pick up a lot of sublimation and cores. But when you've already got enough of this stuff, all you're really after at that point is Destiny materials so that you can get higher and higher and closer to Nirvana in your heroes because Nirvana is what you need to then get any value out of store six. So I think what DH Games have been finding is fewer and fewer people actually have Nirvana on their account and therefore aren't attracted by these top end rewards. So perhaps by reducing the cost of store five, they're allowing people to get more access to destiny materials, meaning store six will soon be attractive to people that choose to spend. Now, if you want to go super heavy on spending, there is also the option of going to 200 bucks here in the Moonlight Gift. That will get you times four, which is not bad. You can then coincide that again with spending here on the value packs and then actually blasting out all the story gem stuff. And with that, you'll have no problem maxing the card clash of illusion. And that will easily get you to stage 20. I've done it before myself. And stage 20 here is getting you a whopping amount of, I think it's 80 glorious treasure coins just from here in the card clash of illusion and then when you combine that with the additional ones you're going to be picking up in the starlight melody and get the times four multiplier by spending 200 bucks then you're going to be looking at picking up this chest four times which is going to be an additional 40 glorious treasury coins and that can be quite useful because then you'll have 120 treasury coins in total which does mean you'll be able to get a heck of a lot of rewards from the glorious treasury tons of stuff in stage four and five and then more importantly you'll get two purchases here in stage six. So that's 200 bucks to get all of those destiny materials, all of the sublimation stuff in there as well, and the stellar shards and all the other progress along with all these things too. Now, bear in mind, if you are doing that, you are probably going to have to spend some contract starry gems just so that you can get some additional enchanted cards. And what I found when I pushed this is as well, you will need to go ahead to complete the Starlight Melody, do some Awakens. You get three points for every enchanted card, and you're also going to get seven points for every Awaken. So, be mindful of how many contract story gems you're going to be spending and how much progress you're actually going to be making in the card clash of illusion. I found that actually I did need to do a few awakens to get me to a point where I did get 1500 points. And by that point, I decided, heck, I just felt better by actually pushing the soul awakening offers to 300 points as well. And that cost me a lot of contract story gems to do that. So that's just something to keep in mind. And if you were looking for even more bonuses and rewards, the Moonlight Gift does continue for one additional tier, and that gets you access to Origin Artifact Selection Chests here, and also some Prism Story Gems. And then you get a times five multiplier here, which also is going to get you another one of these chests, which is another Origin Artifact Chest. So basically, after you've spent everything, you can choose to spend another 100 bucks and get two Origin Artifact Selection Chests, which is okay. You'll also get yourself 10 more Glorious Treasure Coins, which then will convert into more of the Soul Star rewards as well. So that's an option if you wanted it. Uh, I think spending 300 bucks on this event is a little crazy. I think even 100 bucks is quite a lot, but different price points work for different people and it depends what level of disposable income you have. But as I said earlier, if you're a free-to-play player, you probably don't want to be worrying too much about going further than stage five and seven, and some will push to stage nine, but only really if they've got the spare contract starry gems. The biggest piece of advice though I want to stress no matter what level of player you are is do all of this on Thursday. Claim your daily reward every single day and don't get more enchanted cards than you need to because if you're spending money for the sake of spending money and just going way beyond what you need to because actually you're just impatient and you're all trying to do it today then that's not smart. Wait until Thursday and that will get you the best rewards and use the least amount of contract starry gems. So especially if you're a free-to-play player and you're hoping to save some of these contract stories from the strategy here, 
then uh, yeah, wait until Thursday because that's going to be the most optimal for you. So that's pretty much everything we've got to look forward to this week. We've got the, of course, Car Clash of Illusion. We've got the Soul Awakening and then all the other bonus rewards in here too. A very, very standard Card Clash of Illusion event. I really enjoy the Glorious Treasury and I think more and more often free-to-play players are just going to be using this event as a nice, easy injection of Contract Story Gems and Stellar Shards. If we look at next week's event, we've got an Imp's Adventure coming along with an extra drop carnival, and the Shelter mission is giving Luna, Eloise, Waldeck, and Siahu. So, if you're hoping to pick up something good next week, make sure you're saving four stars of the corresponding class and faction for these heroes. You do need a casher for Waldeck, so that's something to bear in mind. Especially newer players that struggle for four stars, that might be something to keep in the back of your mind with the week to come. Good luck, folks. Hopefully you can get something nice and let me know how deep you plan on going in the Card Clash of Illusion this week. If you want to see how I make progress throughout the week in this event, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Have an amazing week. And as always, happy idling.